Welcome back to Paranormal, the New Normal. I'm your host, as always, Jeremy, here trying to make the world seem a little more normal. Does it ever fucking happen? God, no. God, no. But we still persist and try. What can I do? I got nothing else going on. But I am once again joined by a guest that I am so happy to have on the show. And I'm already telling you, folks, this one's going to be a good episode. I can tell already. And my guest is Ali Cardinale. Love the rhyme. Founder and headmaster of the Bear Bridge Academy School of Witchcraft and Psychic Development, which I love that freaking name. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'd be really happy to be here. Glad to hear it. And how are you doing tonight, Ali? I'm doing pr pretty well. Pretty well. It's been a, a busy day, but I'm excited to pause all things spiritual and just kind of talk about it instead of instead of be thrown in the work of it. Eh, it's always fun to just talk about it. It's light, lighthearted and fills you with joy, at least for me. But so first question I ask everybody on this show, easy to ask question to answer. But what got you into the paranormal spiritual world? Oh, um, I was kind of thrown into it. So I was raised in a uh, witchcraft family. My grandmother started me in the field of witchcraft, which is why I became a witch doctor. I followed in her footsteps, but I was born as a dark medium. So I've always seen things uh, that are scary, the things that go bump in the night. Unless I'm mistaken, you might be the first dark medium ever had in the show. I never heard that oh. term even. Um, we're not very common. It's much more common of a term within indigenous cultures where the kinds of mediums that are usually linked to shamanism, where we deal with entities and creatures that are um, associated in like a spiritual ecosystem, which is why it, that kind of gift makes me a good exorcist instead of someone who sits in front of a client and talks to their ancestors. Okay, question. A couple questions out of that statement right there, but um, <laughs> so, but let's all right, let me finish up the intro section first, kind of. Um, so you're born in you're born into it, which is just freaking awesome. I wish I was born into something like witchcraft or anything like that. That was cool. Instead, I was just born to be a white suburban boy with no special abilities. But well, actually, that's not true because abilities are forthcoming as of now. But working on that. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, uh, according to a couple of different people I've had in the show, I am a beginner empath, is the best way to put it. <laughs> I can sense things, I guess. I don't know, but I still question it. But that's part of the problem. We all know. But um, so as you got older, did you go out in the world to try to explore more areas of witchcraft or kind of just travel to see what other cultures do for the same type of practices? Um, kind of. So I've always practiced secretly because that's what I was taught to do. It wasn't something that um, was cool or kitschy or a novelty. It was about survival because that's what my ancestors did. So I learned very privately at home within the family unit, but I always had a hunger for knowledge. So I researched and I learned a lot. And then I also did training but I didn't move into this as a career until the pandemic where I switched fully and um, basically took over what my grandmother had started. Nice. And if, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what is your ancestry? Because it's kind of one of those situations where I can't tell by the name or anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, so I'm mixed. My ancestry is uh, North African, Sicilian, and German, but I was raised in Hawaii. Damn. Okay. Talk about crossing the globe, but <laughs> right. But that's actually, that's an interesting combination. I mean, well, I mean, that's kind of just where all the armies were invading throughout the 1800s. So yeah, <laughs> I I mean, makes, it? it makes sense in a way. Um, so you're, Oh, Hawaii though. That's that culture itself is a paranormal hotspot. It certainly is. And I'm actually, I was raised um, part-time on Maui, which is so vibrant for, um spirits the spirits and and it's so vibrant culturally um 
so it was it was an easy place to grow up learning about my connection to spirit and the spirits <laughs> nice and don't know if this is a friend of yours or not but because i don't get the reference personally but no. okay <laughs> weird oh oh you're talking about my headphones oh crap yeah yeah i don't use the mic on this part i use a real mic so <laughs> that's so that's what you're talking about okay yeah I, and let's stream out use your name people so i know who you are please i beg you uh so i mean hawaii though i mean oh, okay i can't i can't skip by hawaii and not talk about the night marchers and yes i'm guessing that's something you were told about growing up and everything yes and i do have one experience with the night marchers so oh. i grew up I grew up in the Kanai area and then in the south side of Maui. So there isn't a lot of night marchers there. I only heard about heard about it. When I moved back in my mid-20s for a spell, um, I was living alone and I had a Belgian shepherd and I heard the drums. I was living up in Pukalani um, and I heard the drums and immediately panicked. And so I came inside, but I couldn't get my dog to come inside. And I sat inside my house, looking out the, the screen door, looking at my dog at the edge of the hill. And as the drums moved across the land on the other side down the hill, I watched my dog's ears twitch back and forth and watch as the sound also moved. So I watched my dog watch the night marchers. And if anything sold me on this is very, very real. It was that. It wasn't a tourist trick to, you know, yeah. make tourists do silly things. The night marchers were were very real because you <laughs> watched the dog watch them. Yeah, I mean, I I always forget the name bit, but I watched this reality show that was on for like a season about people living in Hawaii off the land and having to hunt in every episode and stuff. And they did like a part of an episode about the night marchers because they wanted to get out of the forest before nightfall because of that and everything. And I know, if, I know of a human sees night watchers, night marchers, it's not supposed to be a good thing. Like if, if you see them, it good things are not going to befall upon you. But that's as far as I know about them, really, is that. And well, good news is their dog is probably safe. Probably. <laughs> but not, oh, not you know. people. <laughs> Trust me, my, my dogs see spirits every freaking day. They live in my house. So I, it, they're used to it by now, I hope. But, and um, as far as the question that we got asked here goes, um, do you think because of, of the cave ecosystem that helps with the paranormal? I mean, if you want to go back to my hollow earth theory, then yes, it kind of would. But I don't know if Hawaii would be connected because of all the ocean and have to be a deep hollow earth at that point. But possible. We, stranger things have happened in the world. So, but the caves, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Hawaii is an island, so it was formed from volcanic land that got burst up, basically. So, I don't know. I mean, who knows what could be there, really? I mean, it's you don't hear about much in Hawaii besides night marchers. I mean, Bigfoot's not even known for being in Hawaii because it's in the middle of the ocean. How would, he have, how would it have got there? So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, Hawaii doesn't have too much of a paranormal landscape. It's just mainly because of the spirits and of the deceased right. and whatnot. I mean, it's, there's not really right. We have, kids. we have the Obake and we have Menehune and we have Mo'o. Um, so there are several, several kinds of, I guess, cryptids that um, you would find in the Hawaiian Islands. That's just a few to name, um, okay. but they're unique to the Hawaiian Islands. And yeah, they, it's that culture. It's that culture. Right. I mean, I mean, sure Obake is a, the obake is adopted from Japan, um, but other than that, the spirits that are for, in the Hawaiian Islands are unique to the Hawaiian culture. It's isolated, just like the culture is. Yeah, of course. I mean, and I'm actually I'm have to look into those now because I'm sure there are similarities between other cryptids and whatnot, and it just could be another another version of that species or something along those lines. I mean, there's different Bigfoots in every freaking country in the world, so who the hell knows? It's... I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Pangea explains all that, but Pangea doesn't really explain Hawaii, I don't think. So, I could be wrong about that, but I don't ever remember seeing Hawaii as part of Pangea, so I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, but And 
you're very welcome, Facebook user. Uh, so, all right, well, getting past that point now, um, what, well, actually, before we get to the school part, um, you said exorcist, and Correct. I don't, I mean, I've had, I think I've had a couple guests before that do exorcisms, but it's not a topic that is approached a lot in this show, other by people who actually do it. So, have you, you have performed exorcisms, I'm guessing, if you're saying that? Yes, it's actually my specialty as a witch doctor is as an exorcist. So it's a primary focus in my private practice is in attachment removal, spirit leading, and if in worst case scenarios, exorcisms. But I'm not Catholic. So I do not perform Catholic exorcisms as I and most people from indigenous religions and indigenous cultures believe the Catholic ones are barbaric. Well, uh, there's plenty of proof of that being very true, <laughs> but uh, so so I'm guessing because of not being Catholic that you don't necessarily believe in the whole demons, angels, hierarchy type of thing. Um, I, I, to be honest, I didn't believe that angels existed until very recently when I had a student uh, who does talk to angels and I could sense that there's something there, but I can't see them. So much like some mediums can't see entities and I have a difficult time with uh, the human dead, I'm basically blind to angelic beings. I have interacted with some demons, but um, I don't like how Christianity or um, other large religions lump many cryptids into just demons when that's again again like they're, yeah. they have different needs yeah exactly i mean um it's just the de uh, demons is kind of a catch-all for religions because it's easy to say oh to keep the demons out put some money in this pot and let's keep moving but <laughs> Big you know, I, I mean it's just i i was brought up christian so demons were a very real idea to me until the last couple of decades because it's just I mean, there's a lot of different types of spirits. Some are good, some are not so good. And the not so good ones get just thrown into, oh, they're demons. I mean, oh, it's a shower person? No, that's a demon. Oh, no, you saw something with red eyes? Oh, that has to be a demon. No, no not necessarily. I mean, there's a lot of things that pre-existed before in, in literature and in stories before demons did. So, Right. Um, and those of us in, uh, in witch doctory or other indigenous based practices, especially if those of us that are exorcists, we look at spirit removal and spirit identification um, like a animal ecosystem instead of good and evil. What does the and what does the creature need? What is its motivation? How did it get there? And in that you can have a much more peaceful way of removal instead of just thinking that every predatory animal is evil. Lions are not evil. Sharks are not evil. They just have needs. And if you look at spirits the same way, you can have a much more peaceful and amicable removal process, which is safer for the client and safer for the spirit. Oh, I am 100% on the team that sharks are not evil. I'm 100% on that team because there are so many, there's footage of so many people just like swimming with them peacefully and even playing around them a little bit, for God's sake. But I mean, if you jump in during feeding time at dusk, yeah, I don't feel bad for you because you're making a stupid decision. Like, right, and it's the same with spirits. Like, if you make a stupid decision and the spirit is acting the way it should act, you're exactly. the idiot, not the spirit. I mean, the spirit's just doing, I mean, it's like, that's like saying, oh, because I'm not a positive person, why does the shop person have to attach, uh, attach stuff to me? Because I'm not a positive, per I'm not a positive person, why does it attach stuff to me? because you're not a positive person, because you're a negative person, and negativity attracts mm. all the bad spirits. So, I mean, it's just, uh, I, uh, people, people, people. I just, mm. paranormal's becoming the new normal, but it's not happening fast enough, because people don't understand this stuff still. It's not, and we, um, as, as working with humans, um, in my field, we view humans as just another entity, and that it's an equal playing field, they're not better than, which is a difficult pill to swallow because we as, as humans have such a spotlight syndrome that we think any spirit that comes into your home is there to come and get you or hurt you. And it's probably not the case. It may just be moved walking through or maybe it got trapped or 
maybe it got lost or maybe it's injured. Like there, there's a lot of reasons, but it doesn't necessarily have to be about you, the human. Exactly. I mean, I literally moved into the house I live in now and found out there's a couple spirits just chilling here to begin with. And I, they don't cause me any harm. I mean, yeah, sometimes things may get mysteriously knocked off the counter or you may hear, if you're in the basement, you might hear footsteps in the house when no one else is home and it's, it's kind of creepy. But I mean, it's not like they're really out there like showing up in my face, screaming at me or like scaring the crap out of my kids or anything. Like they're just, they're, they're just there and it doesn't bother me as, I mean, as much as it used to, <laughs> but it doesn't bother me. I mean, it's just, they're there and I've been, I've been told there's a lot of spirits in my house. The literally the last person I had on, my sh on this show just said like behind me, it was just like an army of spirits. Just like kind of, I mean, we just saved, we just saved the house at that point. So it was kind of like they were just stoned at that moment, but they were just like kind of walking around the garage behind me. Mm. And even, even right now, I mean, I guarantee there's one or two around me right now. I could, I could, I could feel something going on, but so, I mean, they gotta be around here somewhere, but it's just, and exactly Facebook user. It's good to understand the spirit. It really is because you need to understand spirits before you know what you're working with. And yes, to all the <laughs> investigators out there who just bounce into all these abandoned houses and like start talking trash to the spirit, like, come on, you you want something to attack you? Because that's how something's going to attack you. Like, it doesn't matter if it's a good or bad spirit. You come in my house and start yelling things at me, I'm going to attack you. Like, not really, but I'm going to probably call the cops if you don't leave. <laughs> so, I mean, it's. Like it's that's like going out into the jungle and throwing rocks at a lion and expecting the lion not to attack. Like it's yeah. so so disrespectful and so awful. And then they're like, "Oh, it's it's an aggressive evil spirit." No, you provoked it. This exactly. on you. I mean, I mean, you poke the bear. The bear is going to really poke you back, and you don't want that to happen. So, oh, we have actually have a good question. Facebook user wants to know how can you tell you have an attachment. Ah. That I love that question. So in a lot of cases, I do an intake if I have someone um, directly. And in that, while I'm doing an intake, because of the kind of psychic I am, I can tell if there are more than one energetic signatures. So if you only have one energetic signature while I'm doing my intake, then there is not an attachment. You're the only signature. If there's more than one, then there is likely there's an attachment or there's a spirit nearby, there's something going on. Of which then I'll ask, do you have pets nearby? Is there someone in the house with you? What's going on? Um, in a lot of cases, people think that they have attachments, but there may be other explanations. And part of, part of that is determining if there's any kind of mental obstacles. And people think that having a getting a diagnosis with a mental obstacle instead of a spiritual one means that it's not real, but it is still very real to the person that's going through it. And my job as a witch doctor is to not give an exorcism to anybody who wants one, it's to make the discomfort stop. So whether it's a mental obstacle, whether it's a spirit, whether it's both, my job is to figure out what is going on and how can we get back to a sense of peace. I like that answer because I mean, I mean, which I, I hate to give them credit, but I'm pretty sure the Catholic Church is the same way. They don't give exorcisms unless they have the person go rigorous physical and mental testing first to make sure it's nothing else that could possibly be going on. Yes, but they do miss some things. Um, I recently had a client who had had two exorcisms uh, through the Vatican and she had come to see me instead. And through the intake, she was like, no one ever asked me that. And how did you know that? Well, the difference is I'm also a psychic. So I'm going to know or ask certain things that may be related. And then again, my goal is to get to peace. My goal is not to find an enemy. And that's a big difference between Catholic motivation and an indigenous motivation. They're looking for an enemy to get rid of. I'm looking for peace which is a big difference. <laughs> it really is. And Morningstar says, so no, so no mystery school like Hogwarts. All right, I guess we should get into this finally. <laughs> um, so as I said, Ali is the founder of the Bear Bridge Academy, which is a school of witchcraft and psychic development, which I mean, it's online. So you don't know where the castle is, Morningstar. So it is mysterious. So, ah. 
<laughs> it is online. So where is the castle? And it is a modern day Hogwarts um, for those people who like that, um, that feeling. But we we're not a indoctrinated school. So we do, do teach from lots of different areas in witchcraft. We're not a Wiccan school. And honestly, the biggest pushback we've gotten from the witchcraft community is that we do teach authentic dark magic. Because my, I don't believe in burning books. I don't believe in editing and education. So if people want to learn it, they can learn it from qualified teachers that will teach it. And there's also areas of light magic or healing magic. We teach several different religions. And of course, shamanism is psychic development. So we offer an awful lot at Bearbridge. And the reason we're online is because people can still keep their anonymity by not going to a public place and getting any kind of ridicule. They have the flexibility of being at home and on the computer. And classes are live where you get interaction with your teacher. And it's not like go to YouTube and watch a video, though we do have self-paced classes. With our live courses, our teachers are hands-on where you have to have stuff and you're working on things in class so that you can show proficiency. So it's it's a real it's a real school where I get to encourage the way I was taught, but throughout the nation and some international students. Nice. And how many teachers do you have? Just out of curiosity. We have seven teachers, yeah. uh, and we opened uh, two years ago, and we started with eight students, and now we are up to seven hundred students. Jesus, that's a, that's amazing. That's that basically is Hogwarts. So there you go. But yes. and, and Morningstar, I gotta say, I like this one. I might use this in the future. Born with attached other one. Yeah, I might use that in the future. Just saying, that's a good line. But and apparently, he's apparently they study occult sciences. I don't know if you teach that there too, but we do. Um, and for people who aren't familiar, occult just means hidden. Um, so we offer many different aspects of the occult and some new age, some middle ages, and of course some Neolithic. So we hit a lot of different areas. In the new year, we're adding um, comedic shamanism, we're adding witchcraft from Asia, um, East Asia, we're gonna focus on East Asia. We just started a new course on elemental witchcraft through um, baneful magic. And then we just hired a Wiccan teacher. So, I mean, we have a, just a huge spectrum trying to offer authentic, good quality education to students that are feeling lost and don't know where to go. Uh, it's funny, I actually just, I just finished reading uh, the beta copy of one of my first guests, second book, uh, it's called Innovation. It's basically a young adult series about um, a medium who, is basically he keeps having to fight against demons with the help of angels and uh magic users and, and this new book is like a covenant of, of magic users and there was elemental wizards and witches in it which that that's what made me think of it but so i mean i've kind of been into that stuff a lot lately but and yes facebook user you have to know the dark so you can understand the light it star wars methodology i like that but <laughs> And uh, they also want to know, do you teach children? Like, is there an age requirement for your school? Right now, we do require that students are over the age of 16. But we are hoping to start a youth program because I was taught as a kid. So we're, we're working on a youth program. The difficult, honestly, the difficult part of it is parental control. How do we manage the parents? Because the kids are not going to be the problem. How are we going to manage adults? in the kids education because again we're not going to edit education that's not how education is meant to be given our job is to monitor and manage the children and we don't we don't want to have to deal with the modern problems of helicopter parents and wanting us to edit our curriculum yeah it could be a pain in the ass to have to do that constantly because parents are especially the helicopter parents who would be in the situation would just be Horrendous, <laughs> horrendous. Like, I mean, I don't know. You'd have to put something along the lines of, of in, in like the contract they signed that like 
we do not change our courses no matter what, like some kind of like strict thing like that to get parents to get off your back and not be able to do anything. So, well, we want to involve the parents, of course, but we yeah. don't want to over involve them where they will try to over manage their children. Otherwise, why come to class? So we're working on a system and um, yeah, an operating system so that we can offer to young young people. Uh, I would love to have a summer program for 13 to 16 or 12 to 12 to 16, because that's that perfect age where kids usually go through that first adult transformation and they start being curious about the craft. It's the perfect time to put them on the right path and hopefully not use um, a tool that ends up conjuring entities into their home that should be there. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it just... Yeah, I mean, yeah, nothing worse than that age group getting misled and doing stupid things and summoning things they shouldn't be summoning in this world. We have enough of that. But morning, morning star adds the three divine universal languages of astrology, numerology, and palmistry all sing the same song using different instruments. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, and are, are those, actually, well, are those three? Are those topics that you teach as well, or is that not quite there? Um, we do have a palmistry teacher. She is also the head of our dark, uh, dark magic department. We have an astrology certification program, but our teacher is on a sabbatical, so we haven't offered it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Numerology um, is it's so accessible with inf like where to get the information that there's no there's no point in sitting down and teaching it. It's such accessible info that we're happy to say buy this book. And you'll learn everything you need to know on numerology. Oh, ah, interesting. Like, don't waste your money. Just go buy this book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and objects, objects of his of, of uh, Morningstar study, apparently. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. nice, buddy. I wish I could <laughs> learn that stuff to some degree. I mean, I probably could, but just no kidding. So what made you, I mean, well, we know, we know what made you want to start the school. How difficult was this to start start this up? Because I can't imagine it being an easy process trying to. Because I see a lot of these people I've had, even people I've had on my show, and like they try to build something, and then like a year later I'll check back and like nothing more has come of the website or anything. Like it's just the same as it was a year ago, and I'm like, okay, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. <laughs> um, it's actually I think it's just been my calling, um, which is kind. Of, I know it's kind of silly, but. When I when I started with eight students, and I'm coming up on my two year anniversary, it was October first. We grew so so quickly that I had to. I now have a council of witches, and they made sure that we stay on mission, and it's a complete volunteer uh, appointed group, like a board of directors, and they help moderate the student body. They uh, volunteer and do outreach programs. So we have a, a lot that encourages people to stay active with the school because it, and it acts like a school. We, it's all adults, but it acts like a school. We have a commons area where people just talk about anything. We have various topics from books to health, to spirituality, to cryptids, to witchcraft. It's just if you can think about it, we have those places where students can continue to converse in a safe space. And I'm, I think most grateful for my moderators to continue a safe space for all these students. And we keep offering new classes, which our old students can continue staying in school and it brings in new students. So we have had no problem in growing, especially when we go from eight to now 700. Which is insane. The amount of scheduling and everything that has to go behind that is just, Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. And that's awesome. Uh, I'm assuming this is Shannon from, I just checked my phone to see who was commenting. <laughs> You've been a mentor for a child that start, started at age eight. That's awesome. I, that's oh, awesome. wonderful. That's really cool. And Morningstar said that astropometry is what they're working on. Like the thumb, be, let the, like the thumb be the rising sum of the Neo chart. Not sure what that part means, but okay. <laughs> and they also say popular opinions vary, so discovering such both truths is difficult. Very true. Very true. And Shannon says, it's, a, it's such because it's a tragedy. It's children 
are alienated. They are. English. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true. Well, I mean, so the witch doctor thing, though, see, that's what throws me because, like, you know, I picture a witch doctor, I picture, like, somebody, like, in Africa or New Orleans, like, over the boiling cauldron, like, throwing in, like, bones and organs of random animals. <laughs> like, you know, that's just, that's like the image we all were ahead from cartoons and whatnot, like, back in the 90s, but. Of course, and I, I guess that is still part of my practice, but I don't have a bone piercing through my nose and I raise kids and it's, you know, like I look like this, like I, I'm a regular person that walks through the grocery store, but I am a witch doctor. So I do spells for hire, like witch doctors do in New Orleans or um, various parts of Africa. So that's, I mean, a part of the job, but witch doctory is so much more than um, witch for hire. We do have to be psychic mediums. We're teachers, we're ministers, we're storytellers and have to be proficient in how to convey information. Um, we're spiritual counselors and we, can, we help people with transitions, whether it's a transition from um, childhood to adulthood or even a transition into death. So there's lots of aspects to being a witch doctor that's more than, you know, the guns, the the witch for hire, but it yeah. is it is a part of my job. I'm just saying, if I was if I was a witch doctor, I'd be having that Hobson song as my theme song for it. Just saying, <laughs> it's a pretty badass <laughs> song. And sorry, Shen, did, did, didn't mean anything by it. Just <laughs> sorry about sorry about your health lately. That's sad. Hopefully, you get better. But so, and I gotta ask. What is supposed to be the mascot that's in your school logo? Because is it a Wendigo or? Oh, such a great question. So it's an Otso bear and it comes from Slavic tradition. And Otso bear is like a phoenix. So it is part of a family of other bears and rediscovers itself like a coming out of a stupor, just like a bear does. Um, they're unique and one of a kind, and yet they find a family. So I thought this was a perfect mascot for Bear Bridge because it's about people who are still themselves but are coming out of a stupor. They want a sense of family and belonging, and yet everyone is still very unique. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It looks like it can kick the ass of all the Hogwarts mascots put together. So that's that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's, a it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty fierce. And I had an incredible graphic designer that made this creature for me. And I'm very blessed. It's It shows so much power and mystery. mystery and yeah, it's the Otso bear is our mascot. So if you're you're like, oh, I want to be the phoenix. Think about the Otso bear. It's a little bit fiercer than the phoenix. <laughs> Otso bears and eat that damn phoenix, that's for sure. But <laughs> sure can. And Morningstar says every psychic ability is written in the palm lines. What I've noticed is that the gifted are marked similar regardless of beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually my palmistry te teacher. I had her read my palm, and she said something very similar where you could see how psychic I am from where my lines hit. She's like, I've never seen these lines converge that strong before. So I have heard that from my uh, our palmistry teacher at Bear Ridge. Oh, that's, damn, that's, oh, I mean, eh, makes sense, makes sense. The hands are supposed to be the key to everything, so. And Jamie really likes the meaning behind your mascot. Thank you. It's, look up the Otso Bear. There's not a lot of mythology behind it, so it's, Kind of sad, there aren't a lot of folk tales, but it's still a, a beautiful, amazing creature. Oh, I've I've heard the name. I just never have been able to find much on it. Like I've, I've heard the name Oso Bear, but I just, I don't, I don't even remember where it was I heard it, but I feel like it got brought up on one of my shows at one point. But, and Morningstar says there are hand poses that put psychic lines in the palms as well, which I guess makes sense. I mean, you move your hands, the lines are gonna move a little bit, so it works. I could imagine at least, but so I'm kind of interested in like, I want to hear more about like the black dark, the black magic, the dark magic that you teach at the school. Cause I mean, a lot of places like kind of 
shy away from teaching that even because it's just like so taboo. Right. But here's the thing, Jeremy, is if people are going to buy a gun, don't you think they should learn how to use it? Well, there's laws that say they have to nowadays, but I right. agree. Yeah. It should be the same way with dark magic is people are going to learn it if they want to learn it. So why not give them the opportunity to learn it correctly? Exactly. And that's, that's our philosophy. I, we've gotten a lot of heat from it, but we're, like I said, we're not going to edit. So our dark magic teacher, um, she does go into probably the darkest of black magic. And everybody thinks it comes from voodoo, but voodoo is not dark. Um, that's just systemic racism. The darkest of witchcraft actually comes from the Slavic tradition. If you're looking at Varetniks and Slavic witchcraft, those curses are probably the worst there are. There's some out of China and Japan that are pretty close to being as bad, but the worst comes out of Russia. It's That's the darkest of the craft. Surprise. And I know. Um, so we do teach areas of Russian black magic. Um, we go through the uh, Solomon Triangle in my conjuring class and what all the codes mean. So people do learn the Goetics or the Solomon Triangle, the conjuring triangle, and what those ingredients actually are versus how it's passed down. Um, we go through baneful herbs and we go through love magic because love magic is technically dark magic because you control people. Um, <laughs> we my she also teaches sex magic, which isn't usually dark magic, but can be used that way. And then we do offer root work courses, which does dive into dark magic. And then we offer Italian witchcraft, which has a lot of baneful magic in it. Yeah, that's damn. That's that's a lot of different topics. <laughs> it really is. It is. And Shannon, if you want to see the mascot, I I try I tried to uh, down save the image, but it's a, the wrong kind of file, so I can't put it up here on the screen. But um, if you want to see it, just go to the website. I put his uh, the academy website a little further up in the comments. If you want to look at it, you can just go to the site. It's right at the top. But and apparently, Morningstar says that his mom is a French Slavic Jew, Byzantine Catholic. Holy crap! It's a big combination. Ancestry is a crazy thing. It is. Yeah, I, my, mine was mixed as shit. So, <laughs> but, and uh, sex magic. Like, isn't that just listening to James Brown? <laughs> I think on some nights with a good glass of wine, it certainly is. Oh, exactly. But, damn, like, what the? Like, I mean, and sex magic being. Dark, I mean, yeah, I guess because it is body control in a way, if it's done in a certain way, I'm sure, but I'm sure. Because I've actually had a, I had a woman on here a couple months ago who specializes in teaching people about hands-free orgasms and like breathing work for that type of stuff. Is that along okay. the same lines you guys do it or is yours like a little different? Is that it is different? a little different. Uh, there's a lot of theory, of course, in behind sex magic. If we look at every kind of witchcraft, it's alchemical, right? Like we're trans, we're changing the energy of one thing to make another outcome. So in sex magic, the ingredient is the orgasm and that helps to create the spell, the outcome. So that is the key ingredient. Some witchcraft focuses on candles and those colors and that ingredient. Some do herbs, sex magic focuses on the orgasm. Might need to take that class just for shits and giggles and just to learn a little bit, maybe. But I mean, I have the Kama Sutra, but a more modern version of it might be good. <laughs> and she's and, a phenomenal teacher. She's also a certified sex therapist. So it's a safe space. Um, and the curriculum is brilliant. They also learn vulvomancy, which if for people who want to like really screw up your Google uh, algorithms. Vulvomancy is a form of divination using the vulva. I will be using Google there tonight, <laughs> but <laughs> how do you spell that? Um, but Morningstar says as mom is also ET side check, but that's a secret. 
<laughs> That's funny, Martin Star. And Jamie says, man, I just want to school now. Please do visit us. We start the next term in October, and we call it our holiday holiday term. Uh, we have so many amazing classes coming this October, and the new year will be announced very shortly, our 2024 year. But we also have a lot of free things. Like I said, we have an outreach program. I do free classes that anyone can attend. Um, because it's important that people still get information and have access to spirituality. A huge part of growing up in this area was storytelling and folklore. So every month I, I just do stories. I sit and I read stories from different cultures. That's, that's awesome. I mean, I, that's kind of what we do in my other podcast, Global Strangers. That's kind of like every week, it's just a different topic. And we just bring people knowledge from different cultures and things they may not know about, including Bigfoot Erotica, which came up in an episode and now won't get left alone, Scott. But um, God damn it. I'm, I'm telling you people, go to, go to Amazon. And if you really want to fuck up your Google later, go to Amazon and look up Bigfoot Erotica. There's like 55 fucking pages of this shit. Like, I kid you not, it's a very big topic, apparently. I haven't read one wow. yet. I don't want to, but I haven't read one yet. It seems interesting and BC Audi like, but whatever. To each their own. <laughs> I, each. I wonder if our book club, we have a free book club at, at Bear Bridge Academy, and I wonder if they would consider reading Bigfoot Erotica as one of their <laughs> one of their their month's books. <laughs> hey, I mean, uh, the, on one of my pop favorite podcasts, Wild Thing, at the end of her first season, her Bigfoot season, uh, she interviewed an author who has written at that point a 12 book series of Bigfoot Erotica. So what? oh I mean, my gosh. I I'm gonna bring it up with the council and ask is this something that they will do at, at book club? <laughs> Seriously, I mean shit. I I thought about writing it just for shits and giggles because it's apparently lucrative because people are doing it and I don't think this many people will do it for free. So I mean I'm I, I don't know people are strange to begin with. And uh, Shannon wants to know what kind of, at least I think it's Shannon, wants to know what kind of stories, like what are some of your favorite like folklore stories that you tell your school uh, that you go back to like every semester? Um, so there's, this is actually my, my real house. Um, it's, not a, it's not a background. These are actually my books. Um, there's, so much, <laughs> there's, there's so much information that I, I pick a different, nation uh every month but for october i've decided to break free of that because it's october and i'm doing uh the scary stories you tell in the dark i have all three books and so i'm oh. i'm gonna do because uh, they're so good <laughs> classic freaking classic i read those novels right i used to scare the shit of myself with them but oh my god and i have all three books so instead of just doing the first book which everyone knows i want to introduce people to the other two books and do stories from those as well but last this month, I did stories from Prague. The month before, I did stories from various parts of Africa. The month before that, I did Italian. I've done Japan. Um, I yeah, I just pick, I pick a country and go. We're gonna do from here. That's that's freaking awesome. I mean. I mean, Africa alone has so many interesting yeah. folklores and mythologies, and same with um, Japan. Like Japan's mythology is so deep and intense, and it's like a Japan's mythology is like a fucking comic book. I can't explain it. It's like a, it's like a freaking comic yes. book, basically. But or or Star Wars. I mean, it honestly reminds me of Star Wars more than anything. I think it's where well, George Lucas did take his idea from a Japanese movie. So you know, it, you know, it makes sense. <laughs> Jamie says. She cannot type apparently tonight, and that sh she should go back to school. She likes how well-rounded your school sounds. Popular, cl popular classes are not as mentioned. I love hearing what, what you all offer. Uh, I hope Jamie that you'll you'll join us. It's I'm I'm very proud of the institution and the sense of belonging that students have. That it we normalize what is considered taboo, and people can just be themselves. That's just awesome. Every school should be doing that in their own way. But, and 
apparently she loves the scary stories telling the dark too. She just actually pulled them out. So and I, I I mean I love the freaking movie. That's the last thing I saw. That's the last thing I've done with those in a while. I see the movie that came out when it was in theaters and they did a good job on that. They got a lot of the most popular story. They got like got they got all the most popular stories from the first book in it, which is pretty awesome. But I did. It was so good. And um, the, only thing, the only thing that wasn't freaking in it, it pissed me off, was the one about the creature looking for its tail. Like that pissed me mm-hmm. off. That pissed me off. That wasn't there. I forget the hell the name. I forget the, I forget the name of the creature is. I heard that. I haven't heard that story in a couple of years. But uh, Tallywag or ta- Tallypole, something. Like oh that. right. The, yeah, yeah. 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 So along those lines, but and I I saw on your website that you guys like teach classes on how to write grimoires, which that I mean. I'm guessing there's more than just literally writing a book. Like it has to have, I'm guessing the energy and all the, everything you need to put into it, put into it. I can't think of the freaking word right now, but. No, I, it's pretty much like here are the things that, here's the history of what a grimoire is, what the difference between a grimoire and a book of shadows is, if there is a difference. And here are things that used to be put in them. And then during the middle ages, you added, people added necromancy that's when it got popular to you know demons and monsters became so popular especially if you look at art um and then this is here's some advice on how to make your grimoire even in today's day and age with digital grimoires or people use binders um mine is an actual book because it is what i do for a living but my biggest piece of advice when people say, how do I start a grimoire is skip every six pages, keep six pages blank between what you put in it. So that when you find stuff that's similar, you have space. Mm, smart thinking, kind of like chapter almost ahead of time. Yeah, uh, leave space. Uh, and Morningstar actually has a good question. So what's a, so what's a graduate from your school guaranteed to learn or master? Like, what like what can, what get, what guarantees come out like when they come out that they're going to know how to do this or know, know how to do that? Is it dependent on the class they take or is it just? I mean, I kind of figure like if you're going to take a certain class, you're going to you're going to master that. It's not like you're going to learn something else in that class usually. Right. So it's it's dependent on each class. For instance, uh, there are a few classes that are certification based. We have a course called Alternative Priesthood where they are learning to be a minister and there's an awful lot of tests there's a lot of uh, benchmarks that they have to show proficiency in including uh spiritual spiritual or ministerial counseling they have to be able to write sermons they have to know rituals and it's open so i have to i have to be proficient in an awful lot of religions to be able to certify all these areas uh but then you have other courses like mediumship and psychic development where you learn about yourself as a psychic and you become proficient in understanding and using those psychic skills and in shamanism you're learning how to spirit walk or the new term astral project um you learn head switchery so in each class you become proficient in those areas if the student does the work of course you can't just show up and magically get the essence in you. It doesn't work that way. I mean, because that's, might, that's so. that. oh, I think you froze up for a second there. Oh, what was the last thing you heard? Yeah, I couldn't even understand the last thing I heard. Um, <laughs> I, I made a comment, and then you went to say something, and all of a sudden it was like, nee, 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 and like it went off for like a second. <laughs> it's all um, it happens. Okay. So. But yeah, we were talking. We were talking. About, yeah, we were talking about like you can't just. Oh yeah, I said that you can't just like walk into one of the classes and gather the essence in your body and know that talent. Like it doesn't work. Exactly, well. you have to do the work, and all of our courses have a requirement of forty-five minutes of homework per per week minimum. I like to push my students. I do about an hour and a half of homework which is only two Netflix episodes. If we like put things into perspective, like just don't watch two Netflix episodes and do your homework. Yeah, I mean. That's not bad in one week. I, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, thankfully in college, I didn't have streaming services. So <laughs> anyway, we didn't have cable even. So if I wanted to watch something, it was, actually no, we did have basic cable. It was just basic, right, crappy people. But uh, so. 
like my my root worker class, everyone is proficient in building their own hoodoo based spells in multiple areas. Every single person. And I see it in their chats, in Discord. Every person could easily open a practice as a witch for hire. All of them. They're every single person has passed that class. And I'm so incredibly proud of that group of witches. They're amazing. That's awesome. I mean, 100% pass rate is unheard of in any school, usually. So I, so I actually, I never even asked the second question I usually ask because we've gotten into so many good conversations. So I think I'm just going to use the last 10 minutes to enjoy this because this question, I usually, I have to edit the thing on the person on the show always. And since someone like you, I know is going to have a thousand answers, which is just ask the generic version. So the generic version usually is like, what experiences have you had with the supernatural or things in the spiritual realm? But um, like I said, I'm sure there's a thousand answers for you. So the way I ask people in your expertise almost is, what is the most terrifying experience you had? And then what is the most emotional experience you had? It could be happiness, sadness, doesn't matter what the emotion is, but like, those are the two wait, those are the two variations I can do with people who are really experienced in this stuff. Okay. Um the, the one that affected me the most is in the top five. Uh worst that I've gone through was a psychic one. It was when I was first figuring out what was wrong with me. Um I was driving down the street, I was living back on Maui. And I had connected to someone on that street. And I am a trance medium, so I'll, I'll sometimes lose my sight. So I started to feel my sight go and I pulled over. And I connected with someone who was a veteran from some war. And it was silent and it was very, it was almost sepia in view. I look uh, first person. So through the eyes of, of the person that I'm seeing their memories or their, what they've gone through. And he was in a um, ditch or um, I don't, I'm obviously not a soldier. Um, and all of the people from both sides of, on both sides of him were, I started getting emotional just talking about it, um, were, were dead. And he was just so afraid and there was um dust everywhere and the song that was playing in his head was the ants go marching one by one hurrah hurrah and it was so slow and haunting i and there was no other sound it was just this song and death i was when the vision stopped, I was so upset, I called out of work and I I pretended I had the flu. I stayed home in bed, haunted by this horrible trauma that this soldier had gone through for a few weeks. It just, it really, really ruined me. Wow. I mean, okay. I, I, didn't, want to I didn't want to interrupt that at all. And I was going to say this too, Shannon, but yeah, trench, they're called trenches. Um, I, I just didn't want to interrupt the story to say that because it seemed very trivial in that time. But, um, and I'm guessing it would be, I mean, well, I mean, it could have been anything. I'm guessing it was a big World War II if it's Hawaii. I'm guessing it'd be a World War II type thing. Um, I, so, I don't know. He could have been from any war and just living in Hawaii I, after. I mean, it's possible. I mean, I, I don't know how much Hawaii was involved in World War One, even because I don't think Hawaii was a state then. But, it could have been Vietnam. It could have been Iraq. It could have True. been, I don't know, because I was seeing through his eyes. Yeah. So I couldn't see, I couldn't see his nationality. I couldn't see his, all I could see is the bodies and dust. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. And I don't, I don't blame you for not being able to, I mean, I would be probably shell shocked out of my mind if I was put in that situation. So it just, I mean, yeah, it's to relive something like that would be horrifying. And the ants go marching in. Uh, it's one of my, it's one, I love Dropkick Murphy's version of it, but I mean, my God, that to hear it slow, it'd be so creepy. Like that, uh, I, I, I almost don't know why a hardcore rapper hasn't done that yet and like put a beat over it. Like, 
Eh, I mean, use it, guys. Use it. I'm putting it out there in the world. Use it. But all right. So that was the most. That was the most emotional experience you had, or one of them. What would be the most horrifying experience you had? Like the one that had you like Scooby Doo and Shaggy ready to run backwards and stop eating your big sandwich. <laughs> Um, so it was, it was recent. So I do have first objects, um, as an, as an exorcist, I, just like the Warrens, I have objects that are hunted or attached with entities that are terrible. Um, I recently moved and I had to move these things. So I went to their, their place and like follows like. So I opened the box that had them and all three of the objects were covered in a black goo, which is, I mean, just gross and horrifying. I don't know what the goo is. So I put on like shoulder leg gloves. I removed the first object. While I was moving this first object, there were brown recluses that had made homes in there. Ooh. Oh. But I still had the other two objects. So I got the second one out. When I went to move the third object, behind it was a rattlesnake. Oh. I, I learned how to fly. <laughs> I moved so fast backwards. And I should have known, like, here's, here is poisonous or some kind of black. I'm sure, I'm sure it had to be some kind of mold, poisonous mold or something. There's poisonous spiders. Why wouldn't there also be a poisonous snake? Eventually, I did get all of the objects out. People don't talk about that as paranormal, but why, like, so much poison and possible destruction made house with these horrible objects. That frightens me a whole lot more than entities because remember, I saw them as kids. Like I was a child seeing monsters, so they don't really scare me. It's normal for me, but listen, a rattlesnake hiding behind a cursed object. I like that, that made me Scooby-Doo back up. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, uh, you know, a snake anywhere is gonna make me fucking run like Scooby-Doo. So yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred fucking percent. I agree Like that's, I'd rather deal with a freaking demon than a snake. Like I'll- <sighs> I'll start. I'll start reciting all my freaking supernatural exorcisms. But <laughs> I need freaking credit. Like Jesus. Like I snake singing. Yeah, I don't have a. I don't have a big machete to take the snake down. So I'll, no. <laughs> but God, that's terrifying. That's terrifying for me. Even okay. Yeah. Bang. Ah. Uh, well. Damn. You. It was such a pleasure having you on. I can't believe it's been an hour already. I feel like I have like sometimes I'm, some of these I'm watching the clock, and this one I just like every, every time I look up, it's like 25 minutes later. I'm like. Cool. So, I mean, it's been an honor, Ali. It really has. And I hope people listen to this. And I hope people watch this. And I'm sure they will over the next couple of days. And they'll hopefully you'll be getting a lot of new entries to your school soon. Ah, oh, it'd be wonderful. And remember that you have a place to belong by coming to Bear Bridge. And I want to thank you so much for having me on the show. It means the world to me to have a space to normalize what is considered taboo or scary and for people to see like I'm just a regular person that works in this area as a legitimate career. Which exactly I love I love getting the word out about things like this. It just makes it makes paranormal the new normal. Bam. Oh, right home folks. But <laughs> <laughs> and so I was gonna say something to that too, but holy freaking just lost it. But um anyway. Oh yeah and all you need now is your own quiz team. Right? Yeah, right. Room's levitating. It's a room's levitating. <laughs> but, oh, man. Uh, so at this point, Ali, I'd love, it, I'd love it if you could just promote yourself to the fullest, tell people where to find you, your services, your school and its services. Just tell them where to find everything. The mic is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. So it's Bear as in RAR. BearBridgeAcademy.com is the school. If people want to hire me as a witch doctor, uh, it is Oso Salon, O T S O Salon.com, like the Oso Bear. And I have lots of practitioners that also are at our private practice that are experts in their field with repeatable outcomes, like myself. 
Um, you can also just Google me. Like my name is all over the internet. You can see my reels where I do free little tidbits of education. Um, you can find me on YouTube. I'm very Googleable. So I'm happy if you want to join our school and learn about yourself as a psychic. You want to learn about how to do witchcraft in the old ways. You want to learn how to heal. You want to find a new faith, one where God doesn't abandon you. We will help you journey to your truth. Beautifully freaking put. Beautifully freaking put, people. And thank you, Shannon, if it is still you. Um, I appreciate that. All my heart. <laughs> 180 episodes in, I finally get a favorite show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Scarily from the bottom of my heart. I do. And for anybody who wants to check out this show and make it their new favorite, you can find it on all your podcatchers. You can find it on Facebook as the, under the Uncensored, and Unapologetic, and Untamed Podcast Collective Facebook group. We could we could find it where we live stream on Twitter or XX Baby, as it's now called, as that Juggalo Bastard. Same on Instagram, though we don't stream there because Instagram. And you can find us on TikTok as that Juggalo Bastard Podcast. I'm going to start putting videos up there again. I think I might pull a couple from this episode, just saying. But And you can also find us on uh, YouTube as Paranormal the New Normal if you want to see all the old episodes. Or you could check us out on Blind Knowledge Network because all knowledge was blind until we opened the world to the paranormal some more. So come on. We want to unlock the knowledge here, people. Find out if aliens are really ruling this planet or not already. They are. They are. They are. I guarantee it. But they are. And, yeah, they, 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 100% said they are. Um, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. Please like and subscribe wherever you're watching or listening. It goes a big way to help us. And be sure to check us out next week. I think I think next week I actually have a couple, if I'm not mistaken, if I knew what the hell the date is. Oh, yep, I got one Monday, one Thursday next week, same time, same places. So come check them out, and I will catch you all next time. Thank you, and thank you, Ali, one last time for being on. It's been a pleasure. Ah, thank you for having me.